Good morning. Greetings on this third Sunday of Easter. My name is Sue von Rotenkrantz. I serve as the Archdeacon in the Episcopal Diocese of Washington and as the Diocesan Liturgist, and I'm honored to be with you today. I bring you greetings from Bishop Marianne and the rest of the church house staff. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, what exactly is an Archdeacon? Well, in our diocese, an archdeacon serves as the chief servant, because that's what the word arch and deacon mean, chief and servant. And in that ministry, I serve the other deacons of the diocese, help them in their work, and I also oversee the formation and discernment process for those who feel called to the diaconate, and it is a joyful ministry. Today, we just heard probably what is one of my favorite passages of scripture, the road to Emmaus from Luke's Gospel. It only appears in Luke's Gospel. And on Sundays, it only appears once in three years in our lectionary cycle. If you choose to celebrate all the days of Easter week, that is the days following Easter, you'd get to hear it every year on Wednesday. But for some reason, our lectionary folks decided that the best and only way to hear this story was once every three years which I find really sad because I think it's an awesome story. I think it's an awesome story and I think it's one of my favorites because it has all the elements of a really epic story. It has elements of mystery. It has all the emotion from the deepest grief of the loss of a friend and the hope for the future to the highest levels of joy. It is characters. And in some of those characters, there's great mystery. We only get one name. We get the name of Cleopas and another disciple. We have no idea whether that disciple is a male or a female. We have no idea who these people are because they've never been mentioned before. But clearly from the storyline, they were close enough to the 12 and those followers to know what had taken place and been a part of those stories of Holy Week and Easter Day. So there's this mystery about who these people are, yet there's great knowledge by what they know. They're also on a journey, and it's not just a journey of seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. It's also an emotional journey and a spiritual journey. They are walking a road of grief. They are encountered. They don't right away sense what that encounter is about. But emotionally, their emotions change as they walk along. And ultimately, their spirits are lifted by that encounter. It also has twists and turns in the story. So a stranger approaches them, asks them a question, and they invite them along, invite the stranger to walk with them. That's kind of an odd thing. We, we're kind of told not to invite strangers to walk with us. So what's that message? And then they're planning to stop and the stranger's going on and they invite the stranger in. That's not all that normal either and the encounters continue. So the story has mystery, it has intrigue, it has journey, it has emotions, it has intrigue. So it's a good story. But it reflects on some of my experiences and my encounters with learning about who Jesus is in my life. And I think that's part of the reason why I believe this story has more impact for me than maybe some of the other stories. It's a journey story. And for me, encountering Jesus usually happens when I'm on a journey. Now that could be a physical journey, or it could be an emotional journey, or it could be a spiritual journey. But the encounter happens as I'm moving along. If I'm just sitting still, for me, I don't always encounter Jesus in that way. Sometimes, but mostly I need to be on some kind of journey. It's also one where I have felt deep emotion 
when I've encountered Jesus. And sometimes that emotion is sad. And sometimes that emotion is joyous. But there's always emotion in my encounters with Jesus. The other thing that I find interesting about my encounters with Jesus is that I'm not always sure what's happening. And clearly, Cleopas and the other disciple weren't sure what was happening. And it changed as they walked along. And the other thing was is at first they had a hard time articulating, well, what really just happened to us? And they start asking themselves questions about the journey to try and figure out where they are and what they need to do next. And always in my journeys with Jesus, there's a moment of recognition. Now, I'm not saying that I see Jesus as they did, but I might see Jesus in someone else or in a particular situation or in a particular emotion, I might feel the presence of Jesus or God in my life. And that, I have, I have to choose to recognize that in order for it to really be real. And I think they had to choose to recognize that for it to be real for them. This day is a difficult day for us because we still are not together. How we could not today invite a stranger to walk along with us. We today could not stop for the night someplace easily and be safe. There are elements of Eucharist that we cannot do today. We might be breaking bread today, but we won't be sharing that with each other. And it isn't the breaking, the blessing, the breaking, and the sharing that they recognize Jesus. So sometimes we might have to look deeper for that recognition in our lives. So one of the stories I'll share with you about my life and coming to recognize who Jesus is was an experience I had in 2007. Now that seems like ages ago. I've had encounters in the same communities over a number of times. And that was the first year that I took students to Quito, Ecuador. And my encounter and my purpose in being there was to help those students put on a special weekend for young people in the Diocese of Ecuador. The Diocese of, the Diocese of Central Ecuador is a part of the Episcopal Church. So they're one of the dioceses just like ours, the Episcopal Diocese of Washington. And their diocese is about half, the, half of the country of Ecuador. And they were trying to put on a weekend that allows for spiritual encounters to happen between people. It was a place that I had been as a young person, a young adult and a youth leader over many years where I had encountered Jesus in my life and where I had helped others encounter Jesus in their lives. But what was really special was we went there to help them and they really helped us. I learned so much about their, them and their culture there are many cultures. I learned so much about them, about faith and the depth of faith. I encountered people who had nothing, and I literally mean nothing, yet they had faith that was deeper and stronger than mine. And they willingly shared that with us and with me. And in those encounters, in those walking along the story with them, learning about their lives, learning about what fed them and nourished them in their faith, I encountered Jesus with them. Now, you don't have to go to Quito, Ecuador to encounter faith. I think all you need to do is be in relationship with another person, to be in dialogue with another person, to walk in some of their shoes and then walk in your shoes. It's about trying to figure out who you are. And as we used to say at a camp I was at, allowing the Christ in me to meet the Christ in you. Because we believe that Jesus is present in each of us. So even if we can't be in the same room together, even if we can't be in our churches together, 
We're encountering each other by what we say and share in our worship online, maybe in a Bible study, with our families day to day, with our neighbors as we greet them, with the person we encounter in the store who's checking us out and we thank them for their ministry. You can be blessed by just as simple encounters as that. In all of the encounters in the Emmaus story, I think there are a number of things that happen. These folks had experienced life in following Jesus and listening to Jesus and learning from Jesus. And in that, they had great hope. But death dashed that hope. And even when some of the women said they heard, they saw, they experienced Jesus, they say they were astonished, but they didn't believe. We don't know why they didn't believe. None of the disciples believed the women until they too had an encounter with Jesus. Last week we talked about Thomas. He didn't believe his best friends until he saw Jesus. Sometimes I think grief, whether it's grief of loss of relationship or death or sickness or grief over the loss of a job or whatever is going on in our lives, grief can overcome the positive feelings we understand and know. And it takes an encounter to change that into resurrection, into back to hope. And the journey in getting there transforms us for ministry in the world. I wanna encourage you to be in conversation with persons who you meet right now. Our world needs the hope and the love that we can bring to it. Our world needs the joy of our faith and the people we encounter every day who are trying to make it from day one to day two, they need to know that there's joy for them and that you have that joy because of what you believe about who Jesus is. May you be blessed this Easter. May you find joy and may you walk a journey that transforms and gives you opportunities to encounter Jesus in each other, in the stranger, in your family. Amen.